deflation. I, I want to point out one thing, which is that you've been very consistent. In my experience with Kathy, she is consistent. If you go back 10 years, if you go back 12 years, you'll, you will have heard her saying many of the same things she's saying today. But specifically on the subject of deflation, you were talking about deflation a year ago. Now, it's true. We lived through an awful lot of inflation since then. I'm curious to know why, not just that you believe inflation, deflation, excuse me, is important to talk about, but why you have brought this up uh, in a very open way. You wrote an open letter yesterday that the Federal Reserve, um, you know, speaking to the risk of what you call the policy error, not the only person, by the way, who's suggested the Fed may be going too far too fast. Why throw it out in the open like that? Um, we were struck at the unanimity of, of the vote uh, among the Fed governors. And uh, that tells us that this discussion is not uh, getting out there broadly enough. Uh, and so we wanted to raise some points, specifically the commodities I just mentioned, downstream used car prices. Used car prices were one of the first indications that the supply demand imbalance was going to become extreme. Uh, they went up 54% year over year, tested to 45%. Now they're down year over year. And we think they're actually going to go down a lot more. Why? Because of, of the shift, the consumer preference shift to electric vehicles, the residual values of gas powered vehicles, we believe is going to fall apart. Many people uh, inventoried a car because they did not want to take mass transit. They didn't need that car. Mass transit is back. Now they were looking at prices saying, oh my gosh, I could get a nice profit. Now they'll have an inventory loss. Maybe they won't take it. Maybe they'll keep the car. But uh, we think the dealers are going to be in a lot of trouble. They already are. The stock market is telling us. Ulrika, there are important linkages between economic conditions, the capital markets, and the innovation cycle. Do you worry that the rising cost of capital, demand destruction from monetary policy, and the risk of a recession, if we aren't already in one, will damage the funding model and maybe even the business model for transformative technology? Yeah, for sure. Very, very briefly to your inflation point, if, if I may, if we look currently at the composition of PC inflation, about half of it is demand driven and half of it is supply driven. So even now that we are seeing these supply chains loosening up, even if we were to go back to pre-COVID levels from the supply side, we would still get to a PCE about 4%. So I think maybe just also tying this into your point, right now the Fed doesn't seem to have a choice, but maybe just also would still get to a PCE about 4%. So I think maybe just also tying this into your point, right now the Fed percent I side, we would still get to a peak to even very briefly to your inflation point, if, if I may, if we look currently at the composition of PC inflation, about half of it is demand driven and half of it is supply driven. So even now that we are seeing these supply chains loosening up, even if we were to go back to pre-COVID levels from the supply side, we would still get to a PCE about 4%. So I think maybe just also tying this into your point, Right now, the Fed doesn't seem to have a choice but to go and target the demand side inflation, which means bringing GDP down and raising rates further. So, yes, I do think it will impact the cost of capital, will impact what's getting funded. That innovation bill is slowing. But the question is, you know, there is bright light at the end of the tunnel. Every recession ends. Every rate cycle ends. And typically, the data shows that one to three quarters after the peak in rates, you know, we see a bottom in the equity market. So I think what we are going to is transitory and will open up um, an incredible investing opportunity set um, into innovation as we are coming out of that. Be careful. Tra transitory has become a four letter word. <laughs> I think history will judge this. Transitory just took a little longer. Uh, I'll also make a point that um, what we have in the Fed is, uh, is really a Keynesian Fed. Uh, that does believe that inflation and demand are positively correlated. The history of, in the 80s, 90s, and, and the 2000s is that is not true. When growth picks up, productivity picks up, right? 
And that is an anti, a potent anti-inflationary force. The other thing that's going on, and you know, it's been interesting to watch <coughs> the surprise around the dollar's uh, increase, 25% in the last year. That's another powerful inflationary, uh, anti-inflationary force. Um, so in this country, anyway. In this country, but it, it, you know what the problem in the emerging markets? It's crushing them. Why? I remember, I've been in the business for a while, as most of you know. Uh, in the early 80s, the dollar did the same thing in response to monetary policy. And we ended up in the Plaza Accord and the Louvre Accord, where all of the Treasury ministers around the world, including our own, uh, decided to sell dollars and buy those other currencies because that dollar increase was becoming deflationary. Why? Dollar denominated debt, right? As their currencies are falling apart, their ability to service dollar denominated debt is disappearing. And that's why many of them are going to the IMF. You've got the IMF, uh, the World Bank, <clears throat> and one other organization uh, uh, basically saying, do you understand what's going on out here? Most, the US doesn't. Uh, 